welcome everybody to a very different, very weird episode right now of Who's Your Band? This is the first time Sean and I are not in our home studios. We uh, we both have crazy stuff going on. I haven't been feeling oh, great. Oh, yeah. This is great. Jeff's having a heart attack and I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm doing a mortgage. So well, it's you, great stuff. Yeah, which will mean you're going to have a heart attack very shortly. Um, yes. Yeah, no, I haven't been feeling good. Um, and I've been taking some medicine, trying to feel better. But that's the side point. So I'm just waiting to go to see a doctor. But, be but before that, could we please introduce our guest today? I know, Sean, you're very excited to introduce our guest. Go ahead. I'm going to let you, since this is different, introduce our special guest for today. Well, let me tell you, this is a guy who I spent a good por a good portion of my youth watching on television. Uh, Mr. Dave Ruprecht from uh, Supermarket Sweep. Hi, guys. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Now, let me just, one of my favorite things about that show is I always say that I would be an amazing contestant on that show. That's what everybody says. But I don't like to run. <laughs> well, that's why we have two members on each team. One runs and one sits in the back and cheers them on. You'd be the cheerer. Yeah, but the problem is, Dave, I know a lot of fat people. Ah. So I'm so I'm kind of screwed either way. <laughs> I can't help you with that. Not that we didn't have people of girth running around the supermarket. <laughs> that is true. We almost we almost saw some boob slippage many a time on that show. Yes. You know, I wanted to ask David, because because in case I have to go soon, there's, there were two things that really stood on my mind about your career, David. I'm like Sean. We're both big fans of yours. And you were in the iconic Gilligan's Island episode with the Globetrotters? Yes, the Harlem Globetrotters on Gilligan's Island. So took a, a, a bunch of questions, okay? First, David, Ginger or Marian? <laughs> uh, Marianne, first of all, who just passed. I uh, know, yeah. Gone well. She was a sweetheart. She was just as sweet as you would want her to be. She was down to earth. Well, first of all, like you guys were saying about my show, I was that way about Gilligan's Island. I grew up on Gilligan's Island. So here came an opportunity just because I had studied Jim Backus and I could do Thurston Howe with that upper crust sort of <laughs> accent in the left. I got the gig. And then I walk on the set the first right, day. Right, because you played his son on it, right? Yes, and anybody who knows the show knows the Howells didn't have children. But basically what happened is at the last minute they were going to shoot this, and he got too sick to work. So they rewrote his part as his son. So, so, why, it, so if the Harlem Globetrotters are stuck on an island, why do they want to play basketball so bad? That's what the Harlem Globetrotters do. <laughs> uh, so if you're stuck uh, on an how, island. How, how it came about was the network had a commitment to uh, uh, Sherwood Schwartz for Gilligan's Island. They had a commitment to the Globetrotters. Time was running out. And so they came to Sherwood and said, can you put these two items together? And he did and had them crash a plane and there and then you have you have to have them playing basketball because they're not known for their acting chops how did they build um a court on the island how did they have clothes they were on a three-hour <laughs> tour and they had, and had to, uh, i think they had nets and they had a basketball and they had a basketball court <laughs> but they couldn't fix a hole in the boat you know what? I think by that time, this was the third TV movie. By that time, they had gotten off the island. The Howells went back and built a resort on the island. So that explains it. Oh, OK. And it then still doesn't other... explain in the original series how they got all the stuff they got. Oh, and they said, make... uh, the professor could build a radio out of uh, Bobby oh, Pence and the hair and that, but they couldn't get off the <laughs> island. I know that show was only on the air for three seasons. Right. It seems like it was on like a lot longer. Doesn't it feel that way? It was one of the first shows that really re that in the original Star Trek. 
Uh, so it feels like there were uh, hundreds of shows, but there were only probably s- maybe 60, 55. And then you were on also, man, another iconic show that like every, I think every junior high school boy watched was Three's Company. And you married uh, Janet Wood. Yes, I do. Uh it's interesting, both the uh, Ginger from Gilligan's Island had left, and the original Chrissy, who was uh, Su- uh, Su- Susan Suzanne Summers. Summers, I ended up doing her sitcom later on, totally unrelated. Uh, both those women, who were the reasons that the teenage boys were watching the show, were not on the show when I was on it. But uh, Joyce DeWitt was a sweetheart. It, it, that those three episodes I did at the end of their run were some of the best times I ever had on a, any set. It, they were the three of them, uh, having been done a lot of guest starring work, they knew what it's like. You're thrown into this group who's spent seven years together, marriages, divorces, death, births, and you're thrown in there for a week. So the three of them on the first day sat me down and they said, hey, we've done this. Here's where you go for lunch. And the telephone in this studio is always busy. So go across the hall. They're not filming this week and use their, they were the, just, the. it was, and John Ritter to have gotten to know him. He was the greatest guy. Again, Exactly what you, he had a wonderful, what I call low rent sense of humor like me, love to drop trowel, love to drop trowel. <laughs> he would do anything for a laugh, and just like me. Uh, he, they, it was a wonderful set, great experience. Was uh, Don not still on the show when you did that last episode? Yes, but he just popped in briefly stood at the door, said something funny and left. Mm. He, he, he was, uh, was he sick at the time? Honestly, I don't know. Interesting. I, I don't know. They just didn't use him much. In, in those ways. They were trying to give, especially Joyce DeWitt, a good send off because Ritter was going off on his own series called uh, Three's a Crowd I think, or Two's a Crowd. Anyway. Two's, two's a crowd, yeah. And they wanted, they wanted to give Joyce as good a send off as possible. The gal playing Suzanne Summers' part had only been on a couple of years, and they just said, "Oh, she's going off to be a nurse in a hospital in Hawaii." That was uh, Priscilla Bonds. Yes. Yeah. Right. Good for you. I couldn't even remember. I worked with her for three weeks. Wait, wait, David, you think we you, we come on here and we pretend that we're fans? <laughs> we're fans. We, we, we know our stuff. Come on. Go ahead, Sean. I'm sorry. Sean, it's your I turn. was going to say, working with John Ritter, I mean, as, as just like a regular fan of, you know, music and pop culture and movies and things, I, I personally, I felt that when John Ritter passed away, him and John Candy were probably the two of the hardest deaths that my generation had to deal with. I mean, uh, were you still like in touch with him afterwards when like uh, right before he passed away? No, uh, none of them after those shows were over. I had uh, no, that's a fact, shame. Not, not with the Gilligan's Island people either. But Dave, you, you were like, you were like, you had like the career that I think a lot of actors would really like to have because you worked pretty steadily from the, through the 70s, 80s, 90s. And like, if you just name a big time show like St. Elsewhere and, and Benson and, and shows of that magnitude, like you were on all those shows, man. Benson, that takes me back. Yeah, my first gig in Hollywood was a Rockford file back in 77. Is that back in seventy? James, uh, James Gardner, James right? James Gardner. Another great one. Another great. I mean, you were you worked with everybody, and I think that's I think that's a testament to to to, to you and your. I mean, you. Were all, I remember watching you on TV, and you were always like the super likable guy. You and Michael Lambeck. Remember him, Michael oh, Lambeck. Michael. I know Michael through the improv world because his dad was a big improv guy, 
And uh, I ended up working with his wife uh, in a stage play. Uh, Michael's married to, she had a series. Oh, Lorna Patterson. Woo. And we did a production of South Pacific together. Yeah, I've been so blessed because uh, I did a lot of dinner theater before I moved out to L.A. and afterwards. So I got to work with Donald O'Connor, Eve Arden. Uh, did you I, work with Bob Crane? Bob Crane? Yeah. No, he, I, had, he had been you, killed before I... Oh, yeah. <laughs> he was a big dinner theater guy too. And like you worked with all these interesting people. Like, you know, yeah. like I like I think of the people that you worked with, you know, not only were great actors and like like John Ritter, but John Ritter had a great story, like from his father. And you like you worked with them, you knew them. And like you could we could just sit here and just talk about John Ritter and, and your your time on one out of t- uh you know, three's company. Um, it, it, cause to me, I, 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 both Sean and I were both comedians. We, we act. Um, but I mean, I would love right now to have your career, dude. I mean, it, you, you knocked it out of the park. You, you're a very accomplished guy and you're still going. All you right. You are a sugar talking dude, Jeffrey. I, 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 I certainly am. <laughs> I'm hoping like this is going to be like my last day on earth. <laughs> yeah. I actually hope it is. But anyway, um, <laughs> let's let's not talk about the acting. I want to talk about one of the greatest game shows of all time. I don't give a shit about Press Your Luck. I don't care about $100,000 Pyramid. I want to talk about Supermarket. Because this is what I watched every day. So how did you wind up getting that gig? It, uh, you know, I went, it was uh, a basic interview with the producer, a guy named Al Howard, who's passed. And uh, turns out, we both have the same favorite movie, which is The Producers, with Zero Mostel and Gene Wilder. Yep. Not the new stuff, The Producers. And, and he, was a, he had been a musician. He was a timpanist with the New York Symphony. And I have a music, musicals and singing my whole life, Broadway and stuff like that. So we meshed on that level. And uh, he liked me and we got along and he hired me. I was a, I had been an actor. I had actually stayed away from doing game shows for many, many years because I was afraid my manager, my agent, that I would be pigeonholed as a game show host, which I was. But thank God for 14 years, while so many of my acting buddies were going off into the distance, in the you know, going back into the family business or teaching in Idaho, uh, I stayed in show business. But that's it did pigeonhole me, and so it's really the fact that I love the movie, the producers, and uh, music that the producer, uh, and I guess the the fact that I love people, and that seems to come across on the show now nowadays if, if you see the trend with the all the reboots of game shows it seems to me now that it's very successful stand-up comedians who are now the game show hosts as well uh, and they're making it was money doing it it's uh unfortunate because uh they don't understand and i just saw this there was some tribute to alex Trebek. Oh, uh, and, and Jennings, the guy that's going to be subbing, okay. said he's... Oh, Ken got, Jennings. Uh, Ken Jennings, right? He got to spend several days, obviously, on the set with Alex. And he said the thing about Alex is that he knew he was not the star. The contestants are the star. And my first right. day on the set, the, uh, the other producer on the show came up to me and he said, David, you're an actor. You're used to... You are not the star of this show. The content, he told me this the first day, and it, it luckily it registered. He said, the contestants are the star. Your job is to bring them, their personalities out so the people at home know whether they want to root for them or against them. He said, you're just hosting a party. You just happen to have a vegetable sec- section in your living room, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and luckily I got it. And what I see 
today is uh, it's not about the contestants. It's about the host, and it shouldn't be. I agree with you. Yeah, that's a good point. And you know, if you look at it, it's a very short list of game show hosts who were also actors, like the, like you know, like who had like established acting careers. Like like I think of like David, and I think of uh, Richard Dawson. Because remember, Richard Dawson was he was a, he was on Hogan's Heroes. He was killing it in the Running Man, and then he winds up also having a second career as the long running host of um, like the Family Feud. And Peter Marshall was had been an actor on Broadway also. Peter Marshall, that's right. I remember his son was a, a professional baseball player. No, I didn't know that. Yes, his son's name was Pete Lecoq, and I remember the little kid. We always used to make fun of his name, but I remember he was a uh, he was the first baseman for the for the uh, Chicago Cubs. But I didn't know oh, Peter Marshall God. was a uh, was uh, an actor as well. Mm. You know what I think is about Richard Dawson is when you can watch the reruns of Family Feud and realize that in no way, shape, or form would he ever be able to get away with anything that he ever did if he was hosting <laughs> it right. Completely right. different. He would basically tongue kiss a woman in front of their husband. It was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. And he got away with it. God love him. He did every episode. What do you think of the new current show that's on now with Leslie Jones hosting? <laughs> There's my answer. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the air. Yeah, it's another it's another uh, what you just said. She she really makes the show about her and it does take away from it. I managed to sit through about a half an hour, one episode. And unfortunately, I can't watch it. So, yeah, that's exactly that's exactly right. Don. Yeah, I will stick with the reruns with my new friend. That's what I'll do. <laughs> Thank you. David, are you a big music fan? Uh, you know what? I. Not pop music. Since the once the Beatles broke up, I kind of fell away. Uh, Billy Joel, that kind of stuff. But uh, not pop music. I, I still love musical theater and uh, jazz and classical. But so much of the pop stuff, I'm an old fart, you know. I I I like <laughs> to understand. I like to understand lyrics. One. Thing. What are you talking about? You're not a an an old fart. Oh, five. Well, you're like 72 years old and you look, you have more hair and you look better than both me and Sean. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, just, I, I like to understand the lyrics. Um, yeah. And I, anyway, um, no, not, not, I'm not a music person as, as uh, I think you did, mean. Did, did no singing or anything like that? Never did uh, any musicals? Nothing? Oh, I still do. Uh, a musical. I belong to a men's club up here that is very big on the performing. Uh, it's called the Bohemian Club, and I still sing. In fact, I'm going to be doing Trouble in a show in February. Trouble from the Music Man. Well, you got trouble right here. Where are you? I'm in uh, Northern California. I'm just north of San Francisco by about 20 minutes. And you're going to be able oh, to nice. do some live performances. Uh, no, this is going to have to be a, a Zoom uh, sort of gotcha. thing. We're going to film it in a, a – actually, we're filming it in a church because they have something that looks like a theater. Uh, we can't even get in. The club has a city club, and they have a big, beautiful theater, but we can't get in because we can't. none of the employees can go in. It's just – it's uh, a shame. It really but is. It is what it is. Are the restrictions tighter in Northern California than they are in Southern California? Uh, I don't know, because we have the same governor who's put the really tight restrictions on. Uh, I, I do know that Southern California is in deep trouble. I mean, they have no ICU beds left. Yeah. Northern California, like the Bay Area, where I am, has only got maybe 4%. But Northern California has 20 30%. What the hell's going on in, over there? Uh, I don't know. 
Are people complying and wearing the mask? Yes. Yes. When I go out to the grocery store, whatever, yes, uh, people are. I, I honestly have no idea. Here's what I want you to do, Dave. I want you to start doing Postmates, Uber Eats, Grubhub, and everything. I don't want you going out of the house anymore. OK, <laughs> well, a very important part of my childhood. I don't want you getting covid. I want you to stay home, order food. OK, stay in the house until April. That's hey, what listen, I want. My wife and I have been married for 31 years and we've been cooped up in this house together for 11, 10 months. If I get out for an hour to go to the grocery store, we're both very happy about it. <laughs> I get it. But you've been keeping yourself busy, though, for these 11 months. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, yes. And plus, we both love old movies. And uh, we, we, we got hooked during the pandemic on the new Hawaii Five O. So we've gotten through the whole, at least the first eight seasons. And now we started watching the first seasons over again. It, we're just, it just, it's, it's pathlum for us it, it's comfort food uh we know the characters we love their relationships uh it's got a little action it's got a lot of humor and then we you know different uh uh agatha christie's um marple miss marple uh oh uh, the M mabel mabel right that we've been saying miss, miss marvelous mabel marple. no that's marvelous mrs something else but we also watch that one but yeah we and and we both love the old movies on turner classic movies and uh so we managed to keep entertained and uh like i said do an occasional show here and there uh and i used to do a lot of uh faith-based films in wisconsin which up until you know a year ago uh that kept my acting chops let me get my artistic rocks off if you will uh we would do one of those a year or every other year and some of them are pretty good the last couple one they actually they're all good but the last couple ones we did it's called salty earth pictures uh the last two especially we did were really good have you ever done one of those hallmark movies no and i don't know why because we watch them especially at christmas time all the time uh and i don't know why i never got into that loop because they they have like a repertory company of people they use oh they'll bring in a new star but the guy who was the grocery clerk in one episode turns out and being the lead leading actress's father in this one you know six weeks later it, uh yeah i don't know why but we sure do love them yeah i, I know the reason why i ask is um about a year or so ago, I got called in to audition for uh, a couple of those movies. And I, I just thought it was w just out of my wheelhouse. It, you know, like sometimes like you, when you go in, you you read for something, you know if it's right. This did not feel right. I don't have your, like I said, I don't have your looks, okay? Like, like if, if they had a guy to maybe play uh, a Staten Island guy from, uh, who, who goes to a Christmas town, who happens to be a delivery guy, that would be me. OK, but they haven't written that scene yet. And so I'm holding out for that. Don't hold your breath. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll, I will recommend one thing uh, you want to binge watch. This is going to be the last question for you because I want to keep you any more. But if you want to binge watch something, there's a great movie on Netflix called The Irishman. Oh. Uh, I don't know if you saw it. The Martin Scorsese movie <laughs> and my co-host Jeffrey is Fast forward to the nine hour mark in that movie. Uh, you f for about thirteen minutes in that movie. So if you have if you have a day to kill, I suggest you watch the movie. Well, I watched the movie. But I'm, in, I'm in I'm in three scenes in that movie. Yo, how do you not recognize me, Dave? Come on. The movie. You're not talking about. You're talking about a series. No, I'm in the. No, I'm, I'm in the movie, The Irishman. Yeah, the movie was just that long that it could be considered a series. <laughs> they could have made that a series. Well, now I have to go back and look at it to see Jeff. Yeah, I look completely different, but yeah, you, you, 
I'm one. I'm the guy who's getting yelled at by Pacino when he's when he's sitting there. He's going, I'm looking at a room full of fucking assholes. The camera is on me. Okay, I'm the guy. They pointed the camera in the right direction, Dave. Is what I'm saying. They did. I understand. Listen, listen Dave. Thank you so much thank for coming out and doing this. Nice to spend some time with you. Keep up the good work. Thank you, man. We really appreciate it. You too. Thank you so much, Dave. Thank you, Sean. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.